Good morning. It is March 2nd, 2022. This is the day the Lord has made. It's another good day to be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that the labor in the Lord, our labor in the Lord is not in vain. Um, with my fellow brothers and sisters out there, I'm laboring together with you for the kingdom of God to uh, gather that's what one thing Jesus said. He said, uh, he who does not gather with me scatters. <laughs> so I'm looking to gather people unto him and his kingdom. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. And uh, Joshua, he had said over, he said, uh, you know, he said, hey, if the Lord is God, serve him. If Baal is God, serve him. Hey, choose this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's what we're choosing here today. We're choosing to serve the Lord, to serve Him. You know what I mean? Like I said, it's a good day for Him. And speaking of Joshua, there's a really cool story over here in Numbers. I say a cool story, just a story I've always really liked. It kind of shows, I mean, Joshua was a real zealous man for God. You know what I mean? He he really had faith and he knew who, knew all about who God was. And, he, you know, he was under Moses, of course, one of the big chief people under Moses. And he... Um, he uh moses they said was a very meek man you know what i mean whenever uh god was asking moses to go um speak to pharaoh i mean moses was like, oh lord i can't i can't speak you know what i mean I, stu I i stumble in my words you know what i mean i stutter you know it said like he stuttered and uh he was very he didn't have confidence in himself that he could do this thing and i mean he had to go through a lot of things and be broken a lot to to answer the call of god <laughs> thank god he did you know what i mean and god, the lord used him mightily to deliver the people out of israel i mean we're over here in numbers 11 and uh i mean they had just went through a lot of things the people moses is like having a hard time after really leading these people out of egypt he was having a hard time with these people they had done seen god work some mighty miracles i mean with the locusts and all the things i knew the magicians would do certain things but and then you had the Passover, the mighty Passover, where the Lord went and smote all the firstborn. And then, but he passed over uh, all the Israels, the people, all their people that had the blood on the door. But then here we are in Numbers 11, and, and we get to this point right where the people had complained in the first of the chapter. And it said, the fire come, you know, the Lord's anger was kindled a bit against them, and the fire come and kindled uh it, it burned them burned the uttermost parts of the camp and moses cried and prayed unto the lord and the fire was quenched well then right after this the people you know they were eating manna from heaven and they started complaining about ah you know we remember the fish we had in egypt and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic and our souls dried away and they said uh you know and it's like they started just complaining again immediately after the fire was quenched and moses prayed for them and it says so Moses went, he cried to the Lord and he told him, he said, look, you know what I mean? It's, uh, it's hard managing all these people. You know what I mean? Why? He, this is what he said. Uh, look at what he said. Moses said here, it said, Moses complained and Moses said unto the Lord, wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? So, you know, the Lord heard him there. He said, okay. The, he, and cause Mo, Moses said, have I conceived all this people? Have I been able to carry them? So it's like, you know, he's like sitting there going, a lot of times, you know, it's like Christians, we get zeal and we think, oh, I can go and do this all on my own. And it's almost like we scatter instead of gather. We don't, you know what I mean? want to encourage people to grow with the Lord. Like maybe we're, uh, you know, some people talking about putting God in a box, but we're in a box. We're just around Christian people and we don't realize how many lost people out there, like Jesus said, pray for the harvest Pray for laborers to come in the harvest, uh, come into the fields because the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. So uh, Moses, he said, "Lord, send me. You know, take some of this and put it on them. Put some on someone else." So the Lord did. He called and he appointed seventy elders uh, and put the spirit that was on Moses on them to be able to help judge the people in the camp because it was it was becoming a very big burden for the Lord. But this is where I was coming to over here. This story. Uh, in uh, Numbers eleven twenty four, I'm going to read this real fast. It says, "And Moses, M Numbers eleven twenty four, and Moses went out, and he told the people the words of the Lord, and gathered the seventy men of the elders of the people, and set them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in a cloud and spake unto him, and took the spirit that was upon him, and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied." Uh, and did not cease. But there remained two of the men in the camp. 
Now, two of these men, they didn't go with, they weren't where they were. They weren't in the right order. Two of these men in the camp, the name of the one was Eldad and the name of the other, Medad. And the spirit rested upon them and they were of them that were written, but not out unto the tabernacle. And they prophesied in the camp. So they weren't where they're supposed to be. They're prophesying in the camp. So, and there ran a young man and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad, they prophesy in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, my Lord Moses, forbid them. Now this is Joshua. That's what I said. I'm, I was talking about Joshua. Look, he, this was Joshua. He said, my Lord Moses, forbid them, forbid them from prophesying over there. They're out of order. They're not where they're supposed to be. Forbid them. You know, they're not doing everything. They're, you know what I mean? They're not where the other others are. And uh, Moses said unto him, envious thou for my sake? You know, are you envious about them prophesying for my sake? And he said, would God that all the Lord's people uh, were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit upon all of them. You know, Moses is like, whoa, hey, they, these people have been complaining. It's been so much for me to bear. Lord, I wish his spirit was upon all of them. You know, Moses, he wanted people to be saved. Like I was talking about yesterday, how Miriam and Aaron, they were speaking against uh, Moses and his wife for marrying the Ethiopian woman. And Moses didn't want some judgment to come. He was always praying for the people and standing in the gap for them. And that's what he said. Look, I would that the Lord's people... The Lord's Spirit was upon all of them. And Moses got into the camp, and he and the elders of Israel. So anyway, so, and then right after that, the Lord brought quills, and it filled the face of these people. You know, he said, okay, they're going to, they won't quill, they won't meet deed. I'm just going to fill them to the brim. You know what I mean? So just thinking about that, I think about, you know, there's a lot of times where we can get short sighted or whatever, and, you know, <laughs> We kind of, we want it all. We want him to have us. And I feel like, uh, you know, just us to have him and oh, nobody else to have what we have or whatever. But I mean, um, I think about later on, even Joshua, maybe this is just two chapters later over here in uh, number 13, I believe it was, that uh, here they went out to spy the promised land. And maybe Joshua had a revelation in. I can only think he must have that it's like, Oh, wow, just how little people did have faith in God there because surely all these people were seeing all these miracles and what did they do? They sent them to go spy out the promised land and the uh, people come back and every one of them gave a bad report except Joshua and Caleb. And the people, to the point to where Joshua and them were like, they were like, no, we can't go over there. You know, the people said, we're grasshoppers in their eyes. No kind of faith, no kind of, wow, we, we must flee. You know, they were just talking about, we got to go back to Egypt. They had just saying that over in Numbers 11. Now they're like, and Joshua and them said, what? You know what I mean? We could take them people. The Lord's favor's on with us. It ain't with them. So he still had that zeal. But he was sitting there pleading with the people. What do you mean we can't go and take over these people? You know, and uh, the people were ready to stone Joshua and Caleb for wanting to go over there. You know what I mean? For for having this faith. So I think Joshua would probably then, you know, because what do you get to Joshua? And he goes, hey, we're going to serve uh, the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. It's like, I think he was ready for more people to have this faith. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, and then you even got story of Elijah. Uh, Elijah, he thought he was sitting there. I'm the, I'm the only one left, you know, out of all these prophets. And da -da, I'm the only one left. And it was like later on, the Lord's like, hey, there's 7,000 others out there that have not bowed their knee to Baal. So it kind of, that reminds me of a meme I saw uh, running around on Facebook a while back. And um, I couldn't find it. I wanted to find it before I've looked for it several times. It says, you know, it says, hey, we, you know, we might not still go to the same church, but we can still be friends. You know, we're not in a gang. <laughs> it's like we're brothers and sisters. I don't know if y'all, there's some meme going around, but I've always liked this. It. like true. It's like we're still, you don't have to be like in the same building at the same place all the time. You know, Jesus said where two or three are, there I am amongst you, you know. So it's not always like, like I said, these two weren't right exactly where they were supposed to be. You know, you could read some commentaries like something people got different reasons. Maybe they were unclean at the time. Maybe something was going on, but still they were prophesying and not exactly where they were supposed to be. And Moses said, hey, don't be envious for me. I would that all the people were prophets. You know, Paul, he seemed to kind of have that same kind of revelation that he knew he talked a lot about the body of christ and the foot can't say to the hand and all this because i'm not in need of you in galatians he was talking about how hey you know all these differences and all this stuff be careful lest you devour one another you know what i mean because um it's just we 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 need more people we need more people to come into the um 
into the fields, you know, and I was, you know, I've been thinking about that a lot lately about stumbling blocks. And I mean, I've maybe been guilty in the past and I, I, I repent for that. And I want to stay in a repentant heart for that and stay vigilant in that to put a stumbling block in a brother's way. You know, that's what, um, he said over in Romans, he said, let us, let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this rather that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in a brother's way. And just over there, that's what he's talking about. These people talking about foods and drinks and all these kind of things. You know what I mean? Because, you know, the substances of Christ, you know, we have Christ in him. It, we have the fullness, you know, and um, Jesus, he told them there was somebody come over there in uh, the, the John, I think, come to him when someone was casting out devils in his name at one time. And he said, and John, uh, this was or Luke nine forty nine, and John answered and said, "Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and we forbade him because he followeth not with us." So this man wasn't with them, and he was, but he was somewhere else. It just kind of reminds me of that story over there in Numbers and casting out devils. And this is what Jesus said. He said, uh, "He said, uh, Jesus said unto them, Forbid him not." For he that is not against us is for us. You know what I mean? It's like it ain't no middle ground here. You're either for him or against him. You know, and that's what it even went on to say down there in um uh first John, I believe it was, where he said, uh he said, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. You know what I mean? That's what he said. He said, This is the spirit of Antichrist, the one that said Jesus didn't come in the flesh. You know, it's these people back then, it was them Gnostics running around. Jesus didn't come in the flesh. He would be this, trying to make it something where he wasn't basically denying the deity of Jesus or the Godhead of Jesus and things like that. So when you confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and all that, it's like he says, we're, you know what I mean? We're, that is, he's in God and God's in him. You know, so I mean, we could sit there and dissect a lot of things because we're all growing and being sanctified and growing in him, but. Um, you know, I know that he wants us to be in unity and especially because like I said, the, the broad is the path to destruction. And sometimes we may think because we're mostly fellowshipping around Christians, but uh, we may think and we're not around the world, but it actually tells us to like not be around a brother that's doing all these unruly things and these kind of these things that are causing uh, division or drunk or, and all these kind of things because it says you would have to go out of the world if you were going to be around for away from the world and people like that. So he, we need to be at the body of Christ out in the world, spreading the gospel, you know, and, and encouraging other people to spread the gospel and praying to God that he'll send laborers to come into the field. And like I said, but not putting all these stumbling blocks in the way and all these lists of commands and do's and don'ts and doing all this. And I'm saying we uh, want to encourage one another to love and good works and to uh, a gospel that leads to godliness because yeah i mean without holiness no man will see the lord but it's going to be the lord that makes us holy to 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 him we stand to him we fall you know in the same house there's vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor and jesus actually told another parable about a man you know was sowing seeds in the field and at night an enemy came an enemy came and he sowed tares in the field well because I, I know they say that wheat and tears look a lot together, I've heard before. I don't know. I hadn't looked a lot into that. But and whenever they were coming up, um, he, they come up the next day and said, Oh, Master, you want us to go pull the tears up? And he said, No, leave them to grow together. For if you go and you go weeding, weeding up the tears, you might pull the wheat up also. So when we go and we're trying to pull all the tears out and, you know what I mean, change this to change that and do the work that God is doing in someone that's already confessing him before man. And especially when someone's confessing him before man, he said, look, if you confess me before man, I'll confess you before my angels in heaven. I don't want to discourage someone. Jesus said, woe to the one to, uh, to, for, through whom offenses come. And he said, oh, it's, they're going to come. Offenses are going to come, but woe unto them through who they come. So I would like to guard myself from being the one that puts an offense or a stumbling block in a brother's way because, you know, he, he said if anyone causes one of these little ones to stumble, you know, it'd be better for him a millstone hung around his neck, you know, and him cast into the sea. You know, I don't want to cause one to stumble. I want to cause one to hunger more for righteousness. You know, blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You know, so I'm I'm looking to, to be a peacemaker. As much as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. You know what I mean? And do good to all people, especially those of the household of faith. You know, and 
Dan, at the same time, it's like a lot of a lot of us are looking sometime, and I used to get discouraged maybe here and there about, oh, you know, why's not a, uh, you know, why why ain't I feeling, you know, getting encouraged this and that and this and that? But it's like really, it's an encouragement sometime that we're not getting discouraged. Let's see what Jesus had to say about this. He said, uh, he lifted up his eyes to his disciples, and he said to them, "Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God." The poor. And he said, uh, Blessed be ye that hunger now, for you shall be filled. Blessed be you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed be you when men shall hate you. See, when men shall hate you and when they shall separate from you and when they, uh, from your company and shall reproach you and cast your, uh, from your company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. Behold, your reward is great in heaven for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets but woe unto you that are rich for you have received your consolation woe unto you that are full for you shall be hungry and woe to you that laugh now for you shall mourn and weep woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you so so did their fathers the false prophets so when men are all just speaking well of you and all this that don't mean things are all great you know what i mean when you're jesus said if they called the head of the house bees above they're going to call uh, his servants bees above a servant ain't greater than his master if they called you devil they're going to call if they called him the devil they're going to call you the devil you know so i'm saying we're going to be spoken against and all that but we're going to continue to preach christ jesus and him crucified because we know that the gospel is the power of salvation to all that would believe to the jew first and to the gentile and it is offensive for people whenever you're speaking it said whenever the holy spirit comes jesus said he's going to Take, take what is mine and show it to you and it's going to convict the world of sin of righteousness and judgment to come yeah people don't want the conviction of sin and all this but i mean it is that it's going to be that godly sorrow worketh repentance you know a worldly sorrow produces death so someone comes on and they're putting this shame and all this condemnation on you that's the accuser of the breath it's like that's that can produce a death in you but uh life is in christ his he said the words that i speak to you are eternal life you know their their spirit and their life so it's going to produce uh, a true godly sorrow will produce repentance whenever that conviction of sin comes it's going to oh when you see that sin for what it is yeah that's why we don't rejoice in in unrighteousness we rejoice in the truth because you not we're not going to rejoice in things in us but we're going to repent and turn to him but it's going to be him that does that he has to draw us you know because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word so i just wanted to go a little bit over some of that with you there's there's probably a lot more i could say on this you know we, i was thinking about Stephen earlier he told them he said you stiff neck and uncircumcised he said you you always resist the holy ghost just as you know he said the just as the prophets and all that you did to them of old you you slaughtered all them that god sent so you know the the people that's always been really seeking and zealous for god have always either maybe either felt isolated or but they're being persecuted and been spoken against they're not a lot of them not the ones that are these big pro uh, prosperous people and stuff like you see what jesus said he said woe to you when all men speak well of you and you know blessed are you that hunger and all this stuff because he wants to gain his life will lose it, and who wants to lose his life will gain it. Who who does lose his life will gain it. You know, and to live is Christ, and to die is gain. So I just want to tell you one more time, you know, it is appointed unto man wants to die, and after this can, uh, comes judgment. So um, judgment begins here at the house of God, you know, and um, you you need Christ Jesus in judgment. You need the Lord to look down and see you, you know, because out there will be, this place of hell where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. So if you'll confess today with your mouth, Christ Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved with the mouth. You confess and it results to salvation with the heart. You truly believe and it result in righteousness. I mean, really believe. And Jesus said, you know, he talked about forgiveness. He said, look, if you don't forgive your brother from, uh, you, from your heart, God will not forgive you. You know what I mean? So we, we must walk in forgiveness. We must, uh, it's a, it don't let the sun go down in our anger. Don't let bitterness grow. You know, I saw that uh, a year ago in a garden. You let a root because it says it's like a root and it defiles many when that bitterness grows in us. If you let it grow in you, I mean, you let it, you let a weed grow one day. That root might be like this big. You let it go the next day. It's, I mean, it's, and I mean, just a few days later, it's just, it's huge. Just, you got weeds all over the place. So anyway, I mean, I just wanted to share some of that with y'all. I love y'all. Shoot me some prayer requests. Uh, abide in him apart from him we can do nothing uh christ jesus he is the light of the world he's the way the truth and the life um walk by faith not by sight keep your mind on things above not on things on the earth 
you know, he whose mind has stayed on the Lord is in perfect peace because he trusts in, in, in thee. And he wants to give you peace today, peace not that the world gives, but a true peace that can only be found in him. You know, I love you all. Have a wonderful day again.